Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new episode at Did Somebody Say Retro. In today's episode we're going to be doing a tour of the games room. Now although I have done a couple of little walkthrough videos before on Instagram over the last two years, they have just been like a slow motion scan of the room just so you get an opportunity to see, see the shelves and see the console set up and things like that. But I did want to make a more in-depth video where I can explain some of the backstories or just have a little bit of um, information on some of my collection. Now there's a lot to talk about in the collection and a lot of it's boxed and some of it needs certain batteries to turn it on but if you take a mental note and at the end of the video just drop in the comment section what objects you want to see more of then maybe I can do a more in-depth video in a week or two. Now before we get started you might have noticed something a little bit different. I've got a brand new mug. So yeah this is really cool. I really really like it. This is from Mick Crisp and You're So Cool and I'm going to put the tags for their Instagram page in the description for you to go and check them out. And another shout out to my good friend Ravnita Raya who made the original Did Somebody Say Retro logo. So that's everything from me everybody, let's start the tour. So we're going to start off with the first shelf, we're going to go from top left to bottom right and if you can see behind Psyduck that's the Gamecube Spongebob Squarepants sealed controller. It's one of my prize pieces in the collection, difficult to get a price on that. So that's going to be sitting with me for quite a while. Um, yeah, it's, I don't really have a lot of sealed stuff, but um, that's one that's a little bit rare, so I'll be keeping hold of that. You'll see as well, there's my Master System games, Mega Drive games, some classics in there, like the Sonics, uh, Streets of Rage, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Golden Axe, Earthworm Jim, Desert Strike, Jungle Strike. Then underneath Squirtle, can you see Squirtle on there? Just about. We've got some loose carts as well, uh, some Master System, some Mega Drive. Uh, they're just the ones that I've picked up over the years or from when I was younger where I've either lost the boxes for or I picked up the carts without the box. And then just here you can see some Game Boy Advance faceplates. Can't really remember where I got those from but they're pretty cool. I'm sure I saw someone put a picture up recently. I'm sure there's back pieces to those as well, like a back half but um, I don't have them unfortunately but they're still pretty cool and good to have on display. If I can just get them to sit right, there you go. And then we've got a few figures, so we've got the squid from Minecraft, and these, I saw these on a Facebook group um, a few weeks ago. I hadn't seen these since I was a little kid, and they're the exact ones that I used to have, so there was no way that I was not going to buy them. So I don't really have that much information on them. I probably could if I really looked into it, but if you guys have seen these before and have some more information, just let me know in the comments box. And then we have the Xbox, and that is one of my all-time favourite consoles. That's because it was the first time that I was able to play games online. And the main one that we played online was that bad boy right there, Halo 2. One of the best games ever made. And yeah, I got a lot of love for that game and spent a lot of hours playing that game as well. Then some other classics on there. We've got GTA San Andreas, lots of hours in that. Then we've got Fight Night Round 2, quite a few hours in that. Metal Slug 3 because I'm a Metal Slug fan and you've got Need for Speeds as well all brilliant games and we'll move on to PS2 uh, we've got Parappa the Rapper sitting on the top I got that from Game I think one of the game stores and Tombi even though that's not a PS2 game it's sitting on top of them but if you didn't know about this game already have a little look it's a beautiful rare brilliant game that is and it's that is I'd go as far as to say that is my prized and favorite piece in the collection back to PS2 let's see what we've got uh, Crash Nitro Kart all the GTAs I think three by City San Andreas Liberty City Stories and then we've got Guitar Heroes Medal of Honors Resident Evil Metal Slug obviously uh, Time Splitters Time Crisis and one of the best games in the world, Tony Hawk's. Also, just to note, there's some PSP games sitting on the top there. SSX on Tour, GTA Liberty City Stories, Killzone and Metal Slug, obviously. And then a Wii game from downstairs. And can you guess what it is? It's Metal Slug. So we're just going to go ahead and go across to the PlayStation 1 games and my boxed Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. You can just see Wu-Tang Taste the Pain at the top, and if you haven't seen it before already, there's the Wu-Tang PS1 control pad as well. Wicked, isn't it? But it's pretty difficult to play on, but it makes up for it in looks. 
So let's just take a quick look at the PS1 games. I was a big PS1 fan, so this is one of the consoles that I've got the most games for. Um, as you can see at the start, everything's in alphabetical order. You can see at the start that Crash Bandicoot, I've got all of those games there. Destruction Derby 2, that was the first game that I got. I got a PS1 for Christmas when I was a little kid. I got Destruction Derby 2 and Soul Blade. I don't know if anyone else got that bundle, but um, that was yeah, one of the best Christmases ever, man. Uh, what else we got? Driver 1, Driver 2. Brilliant games. Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy 7 being my favourite. Gran, Gran Turismo, Grand Theft Auto. 1, 2 and London. Uh, what else do we have? Medieval 1 and 2. Metal Slug, obviously. Uh, Oddworld. We've got the Resident Evils up there. Every Resident Evil game from the PS1. Point Blank, Parappa the Rapper, Roll Cage, brilliant game that is, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Tekken, Speed Freaks, then over there, Theme Park, Tomb Raider, all the Tomb Raiders, and whatever's stuck behind there, we go into the W's like Smackdown and stuff, but there's all the Tony Hawk's games there as well. So now we're here at Game Boy, uh, I don't want to take all of these out, you should be able to tell what they are, I'll just give you a run through anyway, Donkey Kong Country. There's, you will want to see this one, so excuse me if everything falls over. Resident Evil Gaiden, super rare game there. One of the rarest games in the collection. Then we've got, what do we have here? Wario Blast, Terminator, Jurassic Park, Mario and Yoshi, and Mario's Pit Cross. And then, as you see, as you've seen last week, Super Mario Land DX by Loopy Mods. Link in the description. And going over to the Nintendo shelf, which is just underneath where the Sega, Xbox and PS2 games are, we've got Pikachu in the corner and we've got some Pokemon games, so without taking them out and ruining the display, we've got Pokemon Silver, trading card game Red and Yellow. Also a box Game Boy Advance, which is mint condition, a couple of Zelda games there. And then we've got the NES collection. So before we go through the NES games, I picked this up from a market that I did uh, last year, and that is a really old Donkey Kong chewing gum. I don't fancy eating that, but it looks really cool nonetheless. So I had to put that on display. So let's have a look at some of these NES games. Some of these in particular I've had since I was a little kid, so A Boy in His Blob, Castlevania, Donkey Kong Classics, Marble Madness, Dr. Mario... You know what, pretty much nearly all of them actually, I didn't even realise. Solar Jetman, uh, Zelda, Wrestlemania, they're all the ones from when I was younger. So yeah, they're very, very special to me because this was the first proper console that I ever had. So yeah, some great games on there and my favourite being Super Mario Brothers 3. And then we'll just move on to SNES. So this is the most recent pickup that I had, Street Racer. So that's kind of like a... Street Fighter kind of style game. All the characters look pretty similar as well, but it's not a Street Fighter game, obviously. Even the logo looks pretty similar. But yeah, it's a kart racing game, so really eager to get stuck into that. And yeah, you'll be seeing some content of that very soon. Some other games, Street Fighter 2, F-Zero, Donkey Kong Country, and what else we got? Killer Instinct, Super Mario All-Stars, Street Fighter again. And Super Mario Kart. And then at the back, you've got the Super Game Boy. One of the best little add-ons for a console. So you just put a Game Boy game on top of that, and you can play Game Boy games on your SNES. And then the boxed Game Boy Light Magnifier at the back as well. So now I've just moved across to the N64 games, GameCube and Game Boy Advance box games as well. So N64, just watch Shy Guy out the way. Donkey Kong 64, Mario Kart 64, Super Mario 64, Warzone, Diddy Kong Racing, Majora's Mask, what is that? Yeah. And, yeah, F-Zero, Banjo-Kazooie, GoldenEye, all absolute classics. Then we've got the Game Boy Advance videos as well. So they're like Cartoon Network collections. So you can watch some of your favourite Cartoon Network uh, episodes on there. So you've got Courage the Cowardly Dog and Ed, Ed and Eddie. Need I say more? got two of those. So there are quite a few. But um, yeah, I've got two, two of my favourites. 
then we move over to GameCube. So we've got Mario Kart Double Dash, Mario Golf, which is one that is um, one that I never really knew of until recently, so I had to pick that up. Luigi's Mansion, Star Fox Adventures, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Monkey Ball, Super Smash Brothers, uh, The Legend of Zelda Collection, and what else we got? Pokemon Coliseum and Mario Party. Now over here, I'll just try and see what they are without ruining the shelf. Got Mario Kart Super Circuit at the back. Uh, what's that one there? Mario Pinball. Earthworm Jim, I think. Yeah. Uh, we've got Metroid Fusion. And Super Mario Advance 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then WarioWare Twisted. Now, WarioWare Twisted is a really cool game. That was only released in America. And that is a game where you put it in the back of the Game Boy Advance and it uses tilt control as well, which is the first time I've seen that. I think there's a Yoshi game and a Kirby game that does that as well, which I've recently discovered. But yeah, I had to pick that one up. Um, and then we've got a pin badge, a Wario pin badge, which I got from Vintage Gamer. And that is super rare from what I can tell. Um, I've never seen one before. It's in great condition. Then we've also got a little Wario corner, so to speak. His foot is broken, so if I ever tap him or knock the shelf, he goes all over the floor. Then there's Wario Land 1, 2, 3, and 4 there, and then Wario Wear Ink at the end. So let's just take a look at the area that's just next to the settee. So as you can see, Crash Bandicoot is just chilling there, just relaxing and kicking back while we're going through this video. And we've got some Guitar Hero guitars just in the corner. One of my other camera arms you can see just down there. Then we've got some of my artwork, so I'll put links to all of the guys that made this artwork in the description. Um, these are all due to go up, but I am actually waiting for some frames to get those up on the wall. Uh, behind that, we've got everything over there is sitting on a Line 6 guitar amp. So yeah, I used to play guitar, I used to be in a band when I was younger. So the guitar is still sitting in here somewhere, and yeah, I'm eager to get back on that at some point, but... Retro gaming's taken over a little bit, so I'll just be doing that for now. Then you can see there is a little whiteboard on top of there. That's my to-do list. So anytime I come up with an idea, I put it straight onto the, the whiteboard and then I can start ticking them off throughout the week. Then under that, I've got a little bundle of games. That's for an idea sitting on top of a comic book, but I won't tell you what those are. That's for a post. Then underneath that, we've got Super Mario Brothers, the board game. Then we also have a Nez Zapper, a box Nez Zapper, some coaster packs on the right hand side. And then in between, sandwiched between that board game and the Zapper are the newspaper articles from when I was on the front and had an article written up about me in the a couple of local papers last year. And just to mention in that corner there, can you see just over there, there is a, a empty frame which is a bit too big and another piece of artwork and I'm just gonna go and get that out for you now just to show you what that is. And this is what it is. This is my Bow Stories print which is due to get put into a frame and put on the wall but I'm just gonna put all of my artwork on the wall at the same time. That is also a future video idea of doing the games room up a little bit. So yeah, this is from Mario Kimon. I'm gonna put a link in the description for you for that and you'll be seeing this up on the wall soon. So just slide it to the right hand side. This is the edge of the cabinet now with the TV on. Um, you can see the comic book advertisement for the Cement Factory Game & Watch handheld console, Mario Cement Factory. So yeah, got that for a few quid on eBay recently for put that on a frame. Can you see that? Mint condition as well, so had to put that on display. And underneath that, you can see my Game Boy magazines. So these are really cool to flick through. Uh, yeah, if I'm ever a bit bored or if I don't want to play a game, I can just sit in here, uh, relax and just read through some old articles. So underneath you might just about to see some drawers. That's just got some of my equipment in and control pads. And just over here, some box Game Boys, the TV tuner for the Game Gear and the actual Game Gear. There's some games behind there as well. Don't know if you can see those. Yeah, there's quite a few games there and then you have these which are little cards that were in the Kellogg's Frosties uh, cereal boxes from what year now? Uh, 1993 so yeah pretty old 
Got those from Game Boy Grey on Instagram. So thanks for those, mate. And now we're just going to have a look at my favourite couple of shelves in the room, which is the ones that just sit right above the TV. So at the top, it's just a bit of a mishmash. So this is a Game Boy Advance afterburner edition so it's got a front light i've got no batteries in there oh i have there you go uh that's got a front light and there's a little dial there as well so you can turn it up and down um yeah that's pretty rare so love having that in the collection although it's a bit on the you know it's not as mint as i'd like it's definitely the it's the only one i've ever seen um, so there are other ones on eBay and stuff, but it's the only one I've seen in the flesh. So as soon as I saw it, I had to get that. Uh, that's one of the first cards I've got. So that's pretty much the same as, in fact, I've probably already got that one. I don't know, um, that in the cards that we just had a look at and some figures, I think that's from McDonald's actually, the flagpole one at the end, some Sonic games. That Sonic figure is a shampoo bottle, I believe from many years ago. Can't miss, can't miss out the Sonic the Hedgehog Supersonic Pinball. Um, that is awesome. I used to have one of those when I was a kid, so I had to pick one of those up. Um, when I was talking at the start as well about something, if, if you'd want to see in more detail, that's probably one of the things that you'd want to have a look at. So right behind all of this, you can see the Masters of the Universe record. Can you see it? Maybe just about. Uh, you can't see it yet, but there's a Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles uh, collectible sort of card book behind there as well. That's complete. Then you've got the Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles coins, collectible coins. And this bad boy, this is from a car boot sale. Me and my good mate Peng, we went to a car boot sale and picked this up for £1. And it's boxed. It's still got the cable ties on there. Still got the, the ever-ready batteries in there as well. And I cannot find a single one of those on the internet anywhere. So if anybody has an idea of the value of that, then please let me know because I'd be very interested to just out of curiosity to find out what that sort of thing's worth. And then, if you can't see it, I have my first ever Amiibo, and that's a Pac-Man Amiibo bought by my missus. So here, as you can see, we have all the Game Boy bits, and right at the start there, there's like a little Super Mario coin purse there. There's a bum bag as well. They've both got the same branding and the same design on there, so it's obviously part of a similar, from, from the same collection. But I managed to just stumble across those two separately on eBay at different times and had to had to put those two together. Then you can see the Nintendo All-Stars Battle Cards. They were donated to the collection by Peng. And yeah, they're just put on display and I'm just looking after them for him for a while and just enjoying looking at those. You can get some good content out of those as well. And yeah, thanks Peng. And whenever you want them back, mate, just let me know and you can take them back. But for now... They're sitting proudly on display just over there. So then we go over to the Game Boy games. So some of them are rare-ish, some of them aren't. So there's Dark Man there, which is a little rare. Uh, then we got the first, well, yeah, the first Final Fantasy, which is called Mystic Quest, just there. Then some of my favourites. So Super Mario Land Two, six golden coins, Doctor Mario, Mario and Yoshi. And then we've got the Game Boy with the Game Boy camera, Game Boy printer, the newbie attachment for the Game Boy DMG. So you just put that in the bottom and turn it on and it's stupidly loud. Completely unnecessary, but still cool. Light magnifier, which we all used to use before the before the age of the modding. And then we've got a boxed Game Boy behind there, which is another one of my uh, fav favorite pieces in the collection, uh, Game Boy catalog. And then we have some membership cards as well, which are sometimes pretty tough to come by, but yeah, always wanted a couple of those and I managed to just find them tucked away in I think that carry case. Um, I was looking for those on eBay and then when I was just messing about and opened that up, they were in there folded up. So yeah, happy days. So as we move over to the last wall shelf in the games room, you'll see that we've got Sonic the Hedgehog Mountain Quest up there. That's something I used to have when I was a little kid and it's just some a really cool sort of uh, pinball type machine where you have to navigate the ball all the way to the top. And unfortunately, that little piece there is missing. I didn't notice because I didn't look hard enough when I was buying it, so I thought I was getting a steal. Uh, but that little bit that just clips into that um, piece, which just displays the score, that's not in there, unfortunately. But oh well, I'll uh, look. That taught me to look closer at eBay listings. 
So I did learn something. Then we got this little Tanuki Mario. I picked that up from Sainsbury's, I think, last year. A sealed one of those Kellogg's cards. Some DS games. Key rings that Pen got for me one Christmas. And got a Mario Kimon badge, which is from what you just saw earlier, which was the Mario Kimon Bow Stories print. So that's from that. Then we've got a few of these little lenses that I've used in the past to get like a fisheye sort of effect. And Game Ball Player Boxed. So again, another favourite of mine in the collection. This is just an 8-bit do wireless controller. Um, we've got some Crash Team Racing pin badges there as well. And a couple of DS games boxed. And then my Switch collection. So yeah, so let's just have a look at my favourites. So we'll go with Luigi's Mansion 3, which is an amazing game. Uh, Minecraft, which I play a lot of. The Misses has just bought Animal Crossing. So she's been playing a lot of that. And then Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Super Mario Odyssey, obviously. So yeah, uh, love the Switch. Um, that's my favorite of the new gen consoles. So yeah, that's the shelves done. Let's move down to here, which is a cool little Game Boy section that I've got. Uh, and it's just a really cool place where I can store some of my loose Game Boy carts. So I've just moved these Rubik's Cubes out of the way. So this here is a display unit, which was kindly donated to me by Wizard of Ninjas. And he's a friend of mine on Instagram. He's from America. And I made a, a Wu-Tang Clan customized Game Boy for him, Game Boy Advance uh, with a modified screen. So he kindly donated that to me. And yeah, I've been using it ever since, so thanks for that, mate. Um, then we've got the Clockwork Pi handheld console. Uh, I've covered this in a few videos, uh, a couple of videos and a couple of posts as well. So if you want to go and check those out, I'll put the link for Clockwork Pi in the description. A DMG, obviously, there's one in every corner of the room. Then I've got this, which is by, this was donated to me again by my friend Niall. Um, he's got a cool photography page, so if you want to check out Visual Take, I'm going to put that in the description as well. This is the Ocarina, and yeah, I've got that proudly on display there. Also, you do you know what's in here? Maybe, maybe you do, maybe you don't. So I'll just show you this. This is the Game Boy that I made recently, uh, which got a lot of good feedback on a few different social media platforms. So let me just put the microphone down and get it out properly. So here it is, my latest build, which is an all white Game Boy DMG with a IPS V2 screen. Uh, you can change the color as well, look. How cool is that? All the parts as well were from Deadpan Robot. So I'm gonna put a link to their page as well. So if you wanna do one for yourself, then you can just go over to their Instagram page or go over to the website, deadpanrobot.co.uk and get some parts. The Pro Sound Mod in the bottom as well. So the uh, the audio for it is crisp and clear in the headphones. And yeah, man, that's that. Then as you can see, there's just um, Game Boy game after Game Boy game. There's tons in there, so I'm not gonna go through them all. Um, and then there's a little charger that is looks like a little Game Boy. So I quite like that, so I'll pick that up as well. And the old logo, do you remember that? Back in the day. And you're probably wondering who this little boy is here. This is Jimmy, or Jimbo, and he's the dog that I had. And we lost him last year, um, but yeah, he's the best dog I've ever had, and best dog in the world, easily. So yeah, I fill the games room with things that make me happy, and yeah, out of everything in the games room, I'd say, quite easily that Jimmy definitely makes me happy. So seeing his happy little face, uh, yeah, really brightens up my day. So just before we go on to the centerpiece of the room, which is the TV and all of the consoles, we'll just take a look at where I mod, but temporarily this is where I store my Philips Discoverer TV. And if you wanna see that in a bit more detail, then let me know, or you can just go over to my Instagram and you can have a look on there and see some of the videos and pictures I've took of it. So when it's not looking like this anyway, it looks like this. And that's where I mod, basically. So all of the mods that I make, like the white DMG that I just showed you there, it's all made over on that table just there. 
So let's just take a quick look on what's on top of the TV. So as you can see on the left there's some VHS tapes and my video games collector's uh, Royal Mail stamp book which is made by Bitmap Books. So I'll put a link in the description for those so you can have a look and check them out. Then there's uh, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, VHS and Ren and Stimpy. Then we've got Sonic the Hedgehog 2. That was a Sega Mega Preview tape which was out of a magazine which unfortunately I put in the VHS uh, tape player the other day and it broke which broke my little heart but it is what it is and unfortunately we're getting to the stage now where tapes and stuff like that are just they're just they haven't aged very well um, so yeah that's just the way it is uh, we've got Pokemon the first movie just there as well and the GameCube Wavebird the wireless GameCube controller bought out by Nintendo and then the Nintendo scope at the back there as well and now we're on to what you might think is probably the main bit which is where all the consoles are uh, we'll start off with top left we've got the NES the original Nintendo uh, there's a black DMG in the back there as well uh, there's the 8-bit Mario Amiibo sitting on top and there's also a game and watch in there as well uh, which is slightly faulty because the thing is the down on the d-pad doesn't work but I've tried to fix it I've tried to figure it out but it's just one of those things that I'm just putting to one side and I'll figure it out in the future then we go across we've got the snares we've got a, a backlit green a green backlit DMG that I modded as well sitting in the back and then I believe there is oh yeah there's my other my first ever um, all black Game Boy Advance that I modded as well then we've got the N64, we've got a Game Boy Pocket and a Game Boy Color in there. The Game Boy Color that's in the corner, that is the one that I've had since I was a little kid. Uh, you can see I changed a glass lens in there. So you can see where I didn't know that you had to take it all apart. So I tried to pick out the lens and damage the uh, shell a little bit. But yeah, that's cool. It's a cool little story, I guess. Uh, then we've got the GameCube with the Wavebird receiver sitting in there. Then we've got um, the SP. Uh, Game Boy Advance SP and the first Nintendo DS. Then at the bottom left we're going to Sega. So we've got the Master System 2 there and then behind that is a little handheld console where you use an SD card to put ROMs on. Then Mega Drive. Then we've got the PS1 which is on now. I've got Wu-Tang on for you. Um, I think you might have just saw it in the last video, a little bit of the logo at the top. So we've got the PSP sitting in there as well and the PS2. And then the Xbox original just on the right hand side. One last thing I didn't show you, which was sitting underneath the quest, is my uh, Pokemon card collection. I drew that, I think, it must have been in junior school when I drew that Jolteon. I think that was my favourite um, favorite Pokemon at the time. And I used that gold pen. Do you remember those pens that used to smell? Used to um, have like different, used to smell like different fruit and stuff. Uh, that was one of them. And yeah, I remember that really well. That's what we got in there. Oh, no way. <laughs> I genuinely didn't know this was in there. Uh, you know, I was talking earlier about that PlayStation. When I had the PlayStation uh, as a as a kid for Christmas. <laughs> That's it. That's me with it. Destruction Derby 2 and Soul Blade. See, my memory has not failed me today. What pyjamas have I got on there? Wallace and Gromit, I think. Happy days, that was. And then, yeah, some of my Pokemon cards. I won't show you them all because if you want to see them in more detail, then drop a comment below. I think that's it, guys. Thanks, man. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching that video. Really hope you enjoyed it. I like to talk about my collection, and unfortunately, during this pandemic, it's difficult for me to get people around and have a good old chat about what they've got around the room. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, if there's anything in particular that you want me to show you more detail, if you want me to open some boxes, put in some batteries, then please just drop them in the comments box below. So that's it from me this week, guys. Thanks again for tuning in. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really want to help me out, just click that bell icon to receive all notifications. So stay safe, everybody, and I'll see you next week for another video.